In this third presentation on geometric series, I'm going to assume that you have viewed parts 1 and 2 and fully understood them. Here I'm going to do something a bit more sophisticated. We're going to take the reciprocal of a quadratic function and find various geometric series for it. Here is such a function. At first sight, the most obvious thing to do might be to turn that 2 on the bottom into a 1 by taking it out as an overall factor. But remember that we need the bottom to say 1 minus something. So we'd better rewrite that as 1 minus, then in brackets, 3x over 2 minus x squared over 2. We could now develop the geometric series in the usual way. And the unfortunate feature of this is that we have a rather cumbersome thing that is getting expanded. Powers of this thing in brackets. Already that's quite an awkward sort of expression to handle. But when we think about the convergence, it becomes even worse. We would require that the absolute value of 3x over 2 minus x squared over 2 is less than 1. Such a condition can be analysed. It would give rise to two quadratic equations. The solutions of those equations are not particularly easy because they don't factorise. They would end up involving, for example, numbers like root 17. This is not a particularly helpful way to view this reciprocal. Instead, let's notice that the denominator itself does actually factorise into x minus 1, x minus 2. I'm going to write the factorised form on the bottom, but then I'm going to write down the partial fractions. I'll assume that you know how to find partial fractions, so here I've just given them without proof. If you want to check, it's easy enough. The advantage of doing this is that we now have two linear functions, and we know very well how to develop the geometric series for those functions. We've done that several times in the past. Let's start with the most obvious way, which is to turn the constants both into 1. In the case of 1 over x minus 2, we have 1 over negative 2 times 1 minus x over 2. And in the case of minus 1 over x minus 1, the minus on top could be absorbed into the bottom. That will leave a plus on top. And the function on the bottom is 1 minus x, which is exactly what we would like to see. We could now write down the two separate geometric series for these two terms. The first with a negative a half at the front, 1 plus x over 2 plus x squared over 4, and so on. And then plus 1 plus x plus x squared for the second of the fractions, and so on. Combining like terms, the constants become a half. Then we get x take away a quarter x is 3 quarters x x squared take away an eighth x is 7x squared over 8, and so on. What about the convergence? The first partial fraction requires that the absolute value of x over 2 is less than 1. Written another way, that means the absolute value of x should be less than 2. On the other hand, the second partial fraction requires that the absolute value of x is less than 1. We need both of these conditions to be true at once. The only way that can happen is to choose the stronger of the two. The stronger of the two is the absolute value of x is less than 1, because if it is less than 1, then certainly it is also less than 2. This gives us convergence. Next, I'm going to do something a bit different. I'm going to treat one of the partial fractions the same way, but I'm going to treat the other one differently. Let's treat the 1 over x minus 2 the same way. So that's 1 over negative 2 into 1 minus x over 2. But this time, instead of factorising out the negative 1, I'm going to factorise out the x. That's minus 1 over x into 1 minus 1 over x. Let's write down the geometric series for these 
two partial sums. The first one is negative a half at the front, 1 minus x over 2, sorry, 1 plus x over 2 plus x squared over 4, and so on. And the second one is minus 1 over x, 1 plus 1 over x, plus 1 over x squared, and so on. If we want to expand out the brackets, here we will find that we have infinite powers of x both in the negative power and the positive power direction. To represent this we have to put dots coming in from the far negative powers and then start with the most negative one that's written out which is the combination minus 1 over x times 1 over x squared. That's minus 1 over x cubed. Then the next one minus 1 over x squared minus 1 over x. The second series there is finished so we move on to the first one which gives us minus a half minus x over 4 minus x squared over 8, and so on. Notice that this series is infinite in both directions. What about the convergence? Well, the first series requires that the absolute value of x over 2 is less than 1, just as before. So the absolute value of x is less than 2. On the other hand, the second series requires that the absolute value of 1 over x is less than 1 and therefore the absolute value of x is greater than 1. We can satisfy both these conditions simultaneously by saying that the absolute value of x is between 1 and 2. In other words, 1 is less than the absolute value which itself is less than 2. In that case we have convergence, but now in a different region to the first expansion that we had. The logical conclusion of this is that we ought to be able to write down a third series where the convergence is for the absolute value of x greater than 2. Maybe you can guess how this might work. Let's take our function 1 over x minus 2 minus 1 over x minus 1 and this time pull out the factor of x in both of the partial fractions. This time there is an overall factor of 1 over x that could be moved to the front and the geometric series give us 1 plus 2 over x plus 4 over x squared and so on and then minus, and in brackets, 1 plus 1 over x plus 1 over x squared, and so on. Here terms can be collected again. There's 1 over x at the front. The constant is 1 minus 1, so it disappears. Then we have 2 over x minus 1 over x. We have 4 over x squared minus 1 over x squared, and so on. If you like, you can expand that out further to get 1 over x squared plus 3 over x cubed, etc. As for the convergence, well, the first expansion requires the absolute value of 2 over x is less than 1, and therefore the absolute value of x is greater than 2, while the second expansion requires absolute value of 1 over x is less than 1, and so absolute value of x is greater than 1. We need both these conditions true at once, and the only way that can happen is for the stronger condition to be true. So for absolute value of x greater than 2, it is certainly also then greater than 1, we have convergence. Notice that we have now managed to write down three separate power expansions for this quadratic reciprocal, and we've managed to cover all possible values for the absolute value of x in the regions of convergence, depending on the way we do the expansion. This more or less concludes what I want to say about this topic, except that I'd like to make one very important further remark, and that is that everything we've done in all three of the geometric series presentations is just as valid if we use a complex value z.
The only concession we have to make to the complex nature of the variable is that wherever we saw an absolute value of x before, we use a modulus for the complex variable. Remember that when we have a modulus of a complex variable less than some value, that means the complex variable is sitting in a circle with a radius of that value. We will talk about such things more in other presentations.